an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM Certified Wellness Coach. You are listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. Today, we're going to talk business. That's right. We are going to talk about business. So in business, and for those that are personal trainers, we don't actually have a lot of education in business. So we're going to talk about something that's oftentimes spoken about in business and in management and operations called KPI, Key Performance Indicators for Personal Trainers. So we're going to look at key performance indicators. And what does that mean? Key performance indicator is a quantifiable measure of performance over a certain amount of time for your business and your business objectives. So I want to know what are some of my key performance indicators as a personal trainer? Well, good for you. I've got a few examples of some of the things that I track that I would encourage. So one, new training clients, all right? This is an example. How many new training clients per month are you picking up? Now, there are also things that are called metrics that support your KPI, and they're often lumped into your KPI. But uh, I like how many times the new client will come in and train per week. That's a metric, but that's an important indicator for the success that I'm going to be having. So how many new clients are you picking up per month is a great KPI. Well, I'm trying to figure this out, not because I'm passively just letting people come in, but I'm actively going out and saying, if I'm setting this up to have two new clients every month, or a single new client every month, or bless you trainers out there that have a wait list. I've heard lore of you. I thought you were fabled creatures, but yet there are some, alas, that exist. So with that said, good for you. But for most personal trainers, we're gonna be looking at how do I build my business and start adding on one, two, three, however many sessions or new clients that you want to bring in every month. That's a key performance indicator. Well, here's another very important indicator. This is mostly for the people who are not working in large corporate gyms. And it is how much is it gonna cost me to get a new client? It's not something that trainers often do. They don't often spend money to build their client base and to build their business. You might spend money, yes, on a website, something like that. But what is the marketing that's going into it that's allowing you to spend money? And let's say, for instance, that I spend, that I charge $100 per session. I like doing 100 bucks per session because it just makes math easy. And I went to school for gym, so math is a strong suit. So let's go with, uh, let's go with $100 per session and they do two sessions per week. All right, well, if I spend $400 every month of my own money to try to build my business and I get a new client in, just one new client that trains twice a week, then the first two weeks of them training is the amount of money I paid to get them in. Well, the good news is, is that everything after that is financial gain. So how much does it cost for me to get a new client? And stop worrying so much when you look at it and say, it's going to cost me $500 a month for me to do marketing to get a new client. All right, well, how much is it going to be worth once you get the new client? And I, I'm venturing to say that you will not spend nearly as much money as you will get in the lifetime training 
um, income that you will get from the initial money that's spent. So uh, let's look at how much money it's going to cost to get me a new client. And then you might do that through social media advertising. You might do that through networking meetings. And you might do that through setting up certain uh, advertisements in your area. You might do this through, which is a lot cheaper, offering to do things complimentary in the public to get people to see you. But you may also have to do things like rent space, public space, in order for that to happen, or rent event space within an already larger event where people say, oh, all right, I've met this really great trainer at the such and such training event at the uh, community center when they did a wellness fair. And you were there. And you spent money. But you know, if you get one client that comes in twice a week, you've paid for that in two weeks. If they come in once a week, you've paid for that in one month and you will continue to train that person. So you've covered the cost of your investment on the on the first month and everything after that, gravy. Gravy is not healthy. I will use a different term and not icing. A whole organic cherry on top. How about that? All right, cool. What's the next thing? What are some of the next things that we can look into? What's another example? Well, what's the length of time your average client is with you? That's a key performance indicator because that lets you know how much money you can depend on every month. You know they come in twice a week, you know how much they pay, and you know how long your average client is with you. So now you've got a great idea of how much money you're going to be making every month. And for most of us, once we get the client, it is easy to keep the client. The hardest part of, uh, of training, of building your business, is building the business, getting the new business in. Once you have the business, it, I've, you know, and you probably too, and if you haven't trained that much yet, you will see you're going to have clients with you for years, for years. I even know people who have moved on from personal training that have gone on to be in other industry, other business, and they kept their certification up to date. They've kept their insurance up to date just so they can train one or two clients because they couldn't give them up because they love training them. They see how important the training is to the client, and it means a lot to us as fitness professionals, and they stick around. And that's with people who have moved on. Imagine the people who still eat, live, breathe personal training. Then for you, you're going to keep clients for a long time. Are you able to measure that? What are your key performance indicators? The average uh, lifespan of a client, how often they stay with you. What's the, the length of time an average client is with you? Number of sessions per client. What's the average number of sessions per client per week? And then that kind of rolls it right into the very next one, which is kind of the last key performance indicator that I want to address, which is the number of sessions per week. That, that for us is like the main metric so many at the times because we're probably charging the same amount per session. So that could be a KPI as well. How much are you charging? It's a metric. So then I say, okay, well, what are my sessions per week? And I know if I can keep that level, if I can keep that balanced, I have finances I can depend on coming in every week. Why is that important? Because I have finances that are going out every week. Every week, I got to pay my rent or my mortgage. I got to pay my utilities. I have to pay my phone bill. There are all of these expenses. Everyone's, I got to eat. I got to eat. And I know personal trainers. Y'all eat. A lot of people eat. It costs a lot of money. Right? Laundry. I gotta, they're all the things that we have to do. And we want to enjoy ourselves. So we want to be able to go out, visit with friends, commune with people, break bread with our friends, go out to a show, go out, see a movie, go out to a concert, live events. We got to make that money to do that. I need to know that money's coming in. And then there's always the rainy day fund. All right. The My car just... The engine light keeps coming up. I'm going to have to take care of that at some point. Better get it sooner than later. Engine lights, mm -hmm. you better watch out. So why do we do that? Well, we do this because we need to plan for what's coming up. 
And for those of us who are real forward in our thinking, we know we're going to retire one day. So you're bringing in enough money that you can put aside and it can go into maybe uh, an IRA. And so you're putting that aside and you get that tax free until you pull it out at retirement. Now that is nice. Are you thinking ahead? Are you planning it? Are you putting money aside to build your own business? Are you putting it towards building your brand? You got to put those KPI there. And one of the conversations we had recently, specifically about our clients, were talk, we talked about SMART goals. Smart, SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely or time bound. Well, you got to use those same SMART goals to increase your KPI. If you want 10% more sessions by the end of January, then you got to be specific what you want. You need to be able to measure it. That's that quantifiable, objective data that we need. All right. Uh, SMA. Is it attainable? 10% increase. 10% 10 increase in sessions by the end of January. So let's say it's a, a month and a half away. Can you increase 10 and a half, uh, by 10%? That sounds attainable. That sounds like it's attainable. Is it relevant to you and your lifestyle and the time that you have and what you're able to do to spend time to focus on outreach and building the business and marketing with the funds that you have to go towards it? Is it relevant? Yeah. And is it time bound? Yeah. By the end of January, I put I put a time limit on it. That's when I want 10% increase. All right. I want negative attrition rates. I want a negative attrition rate by the time I get to the end of January. What does that mean? That means I keep my current clients. I don't lose them attrition. And I'm building 10% on top of that. I'm gaining. I just have more clients in general. So I have more sessions in general. Can I do that by this specific time? So take your key performance indicators. Be specific, measurable, See if that's something you can attain. Is it relevant to your business? And is it time bound? Now, I know a lot of you will say, I want a 100% increase. Well, that's fine. That's good. If you train one or two clients that train one to two times a week, then by the end of a month and a half, I you could probably, yeah, uh, do a 100% increase. You can double the amount of sessions that you're doing. You can do that either by getting people to train more or building up the clients, new client base, getting more people in. If you've got a pretty solid book, 100% increase, that's that's not really attainable. Um, it's not really relevant because it doesn't fit a lifestyle that you've got too much time that you're probably doing training for you to spend the amount of time that you need to double your book. And if you did double your book, would you have the time to train them all? So be specific measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound, do your SMART goals. And there are hundreds of KPIs that you can do, but the key performance indicators are, that means that they're the top indicators. They're the main performance indicators. So it's not every indicator of performance that you can come up with. It, it is the top performance indicators. And how do you do that? You do that through identifying them. You need to identify them. I think that that is fitness professionals, we are very seat of our pants kind of people. And if we get a new client, we go, oh man, that's so cool. I'm so happy. Gonna... Thank you for the referral, right? And I, I will say this, referrals, one of the strongest ways that you can increase that, that new client at a very low cost uh, to be able to get that new client is to have your your training clients that are already working with you, get other people in. Uh, and what you may do is say, hey, I'll give you a free session for it. So, well, now the cost of getting that new client, uh, it costs you a single session, but that single session to say thank you or two sessions to say thank you to get somebody else in two times a week for years to come, that's worth it. It's worth it. So take a little time. As we're closing in right now, it's December 2021. Uh, you might be listening uh, to this three years from now, but right now, December 2021, we're getting close to closing out this year. And we don't often think about business. Now, I'm not telling you to do this 
as a New Year's resolution. I am asking you to do this as a resolution for you to build your business. How are you going to do that? You might have some extra time off. A lot of our clients are going to be traveling. Uh, understand what those indicators are also when people are gone, times of year, slower in the summer, what's going on. Make sure you identify all of that and that you account for it. But with that being said, put together your indicators and start taking time to work on your business. And then start taking money to go towards building your business and go towards client acquisition. Once you get in those additional clients, then you have a nice financial cushion. You don't have to do your marketing right now because and there's always nice to have like a little bit of marketing going on so that you're out there. And when you really start driving to push your business, then that can elevate much faster when and if you need it. But until then, because most of our clients stick around with us, once we fill the gaps in our schedule, we don't need to build more business. Unless you need to make more money. Uh, you can also raise your rates, which a lot of people do at the beginning of the year. So I suggest a uh, 2 to 5% uh, increase on your rates. Or what I generally do is I might go a year or two, but then I, I bolster them uh, a little bit more than 5% but I let them know they're coming. So if you have, if you are going to be raising your rates at the beginning of the year, then make sure right now and a month ago, you started letting people know that that was happening. All right, cool. Thank you for, for being here with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for just spending some time with some business stuff. I was going through some business stuff for my business, not as a trainer, but for the gyms that I own in New York City. So I was going through it, going through KPI, and then I thought, man, trainers need to be doing this for themselves as well. So I hope that you take a little bit of this. Just start playing planning your business out. If you have questions for me about what this looks like, you can reach out to me. You can DM me on Instagram at dr.rickritchie, or you can email me at rick.ritchie, R-I-C-H-E-Y, at nasm.org. Thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends, post about it, and tag me in it. Thanks. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.